welcome back to my channel. Today I am showing you exactly how I created this Valentine's inspired look. As you can see, I have the red lip out. I think you have to do a red lip on Valentine's Day. It would just be a sin not to. And I paired it with this soft but sultry and kind of romantic smokyish eye. I had so much fun creating this look and I really like it. So I hope that you like it too. Also on this video, I am collaborating with one of my favorite Irish brands, Powder & Pout. They're a brush brand based in Ireland and I've been using their makeup brushes for months and months now and we've collaborated before so I'm delighted to be working together again so you'll notice that I'm using all powder and pout brushes and yeah I'm so excited to show you how I created this look so let's jump right into the video. Okay to start off I'm going to be going in with my Too Faced Hangover Primer. You'll have seen this in my recent haul. I just got this um, and I've been using it for about a week now and I must say I'm liking it guys. I don't know what it is exactly about it that I am liking but it just feels nice on my skin. It feels like it's filling in my pores really well and yeah it just doesn't feel too heavy underneath the makeup as well which I really like and I just apply this with my fingers always I never use a brush for primer um it's just easier and quicker to use your fingers I think and I'm applying it all over the skin and for foundation today I'm going to be going in with my Dior Forever foundation I love this stuff it was in my 2017 favorites you might remember and yeah it's just a really lovely foundation I find it so smooth on my skin it just gives me like a really flawless complexion which I absolutely love and I'm going to be using my powder and pout p230 brush which is a stippling brush and I mentioned a few videos ago that I've been absolutely loving using brushes for foundation this year I think in all of 2017 I used a beauty blender but lately I'm just going for a brush I think mainly because it is quicker and I just don't have as much time to do my makeup unfortunately so yeah brushes have been my go-to lately for foundation and I literally just bounce that off the skin with a stippling brush I find I don't really like rub it into the skin because sometimes you'll get like streaks but if you bounce it into the skin and kind of like work it into the skin it just gives you a nicer finish and it's nice and flawless and you can really build it up as well so say if you're someone who likes a lot of coverage like me this is a better technique for building up a foundation. I always build this foundation up to a uh, full coverage and it is a medium to full, um, that's the description that they give, but you could definitely wear it as a lighter foundation as well, which I really like. And I'm wearing the color 010, which I think is one of the lightest colors. Um, and as you can see, it does look a little bit darker on my skin. So yeah, be careful with the colors if you're a little bit pale like me. It is hard to get the exact color, but I kind of make it work with, you know, putting concealer on and things like that after. This brush is a really good size as well. As you can see, it covers a lot of area. So that's very handy and very quick as well, which I love. And once the foundation is all on, next I'm gonna put my concealer and I'm gonna be using my Tarte Shape Tape, which is my absolute favorite concealer, as most of you will know. And to apply that, I'm gonna be using the Powder and Pout P010. So I literally just put it straight on with the little brush that it comes with all underneath the eye, on the nose, on top of the lip here, on the chin. A little on the forehead up here just in the center and underneath the cheekbones oh and also all over the eyelids as my primer for my eyeshadow and then I just work that in using the brush and this is a good shape because it fits really well underneath the eye and into the corner making sure the eyelid is completely covered because that's an important part before you do your eyeshadow the reason I put it underneath the cheekbones is to help with contour in case you're wondering and um, that'll just enhance my natural contour so I won't have to work as hard with my bronzer. And on the forehead, in the middle, that just highlights the center of your head, which will just give your face a bit more dimension. And after you have your kind of base finished, I like to go in with my cream contour, which is the Clinique Chubby Stick. I've talked about this before, they're amazing. And um, they're basically just like a stick that you use to contour. And I'm gonna be using um, my Powder & Pout P120 brush. When I'm going for a more glam look, I'll always cream contour. I just think it makes it look slightly more dramatic and makes your contour a little bit more noticeable. So as you saw, I just draw the lines all over my face and then use the brush to work them into the skin and buff out the cream product. And the reason I do this next is because you're better off to do the cream before the powder. Always cream before powder. After that's done, then I go to my powder and I'm gonna be using my Laura Mercier powder my ride or die powder this is the one I have been using for about a year and a half now and I don't know if I'll ever use anything else because I'm obsessed with it but yes I'm going to be using this and I'm going to be using my powder and pout p050 and I literally just tap the brush into that picking up product and then tap off the excess and I do it under my eye first so 
like pat it on under the eye as you can see a little bit down the nose on the upper lip basically everywhere you put concealer on the forehead also but one extra step I do take with the powder is I use it to carve out my contour so I place it underneath my cheekbone and I actually leave it there for a few minutes I bake um, I always think baking sounds so funny but it actually is a really good way to get a nice contour so I leave that there for a few minutes and now I just do the other side so literally just tapping on the product you're not like rubbing in the product you're tapping it there and you're leaving it there for a few minutes and then you'll come back to it and rub it off I know it sounds absolutely crazy and very time consuming but it really does work guys and it really gives you like the perfect contour basically like dyes the skin a lighter color and you can do that under the eye as well but I'm a little bit scared to do it under the eye because I just feel like the powder will get stuck in there and, and yeah I just don't do it there so yeah after a minute or two then I come back with my powder and pout p120 brush the one I use for the cream contour and I just wipe away that next I go in with my powder bronzer which is the Kat Von D palette this is the one I always use I'm obsessed with it it is called the shade and light palette and it is just so good it comes with three powder colors on top and three bronzer colors on the bottom and yeah I'm just obsessed with it so I'm going to be using the lightest color here to bronze today and again using the same brush the powder and pout p120 so I'm just going to go over where I cream contoured and when I'm doing like a nice glam look I do like my skin to be a bit more bronze so I kind of go a little bit more in tints and yeah it probably looks a bit mad now when I have nothing else on but when I have it all done it looks good I promise <laughs> so yeah just really focusing under the cheekbones on the top of the forehead again like I did with the cream and I actually do a little bit down the side of my nose this brush is probably a little bit too big for that but I'm always too lazy to get a smaller one and then I do a little bit on my jaw as well Next I'm going to go with my blusher and I'm going to be using Melba by MAC. This is one of my favourite blushers of all time. It's a matte kind of peachy pink colour and I'm going to be using my Powder and Pout P100 brush. So it's like a really nice big um, kind of fluffy brush. I put on blusher I like to smile and I just get the top of the cheekbone. And I like to apply quite a bit of blush because I find that it fades on my skin throughout the day. So that's kind of why I look a little bit clownish right now but I promise it does fade so I try and apply a little bit more. Next up are my eyebrows and I'm going to be using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Promad in dark brown. That is the back of it and that is what it looks like from the front. I did a full video on how I do my eyebrows just this week so I'll make sure to link that below as well for you because I'm not going to actually go into too much detail today just because I do have that video up and I don't want this video to be too long. So yeah, I'm just going to go and apply that with a P410 brush from Powder and Pout. It's just a thin angle brush. I always use a thin angle brush and this one is amazing. And yeah, I'm just going to go right ahead and fill them in quite quickly. I've brushed them already. After I have them filled in with that product, I like to go to my MAC Studio Finish Concealer. I've talked about this before. To do that, I'm actually going to be using the same brush, the P410, but this is a clean one. I have two of these, so one for concealer and one for the eyebrow product. And again, I've shown exactly how I do this in the video. I'm just going to quickly do it here. But if you're wondering exactly how I do it, again, I will link the video below and you can check that one out. And after carving them out then I just literally brush them through with my Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel. This is my favourite part of the brow routine to be honest. It just gives them more of a fluffy kind of natural look which I really like. I especially like to brush them up here at the front. And I just think it's a nice finishing touch. Okay and moving on to eyeshadow. For today's look I'm going to be using the Morphe by Jaclyn Hill palette. Which is one of my absolute favourites. I know I'm going to be doing a red lip so I'm going to focus on more of a kind of toned back simple eye look. So I'm going to start off with this shade right here, the third one in on the top row. And I'm going to use a Powder and Pout P245 brush to buff that all over the lid and into the crease. And just kind of diffuse it out and use it as my transition colour for the look, basically. Once that's all buffed out, the next colour I'm going to go in with is this dark brown shade right here on the second last row. And I'm going to work that into the crease. For this look, I'm not making it too dramatic because I know I'm going to be doing a red lip and personally I just don't like really dramatic eyes with a red lip because I feel like the red lip is kind of like the focus point of the look but I always do like to darken my crease a little bit so I'm just going to use that colour to intensify it a bit more and I'm going to be using my Powder and Pout P310 which is just a little bit more of a dense blending brush and I find it really good for this particular kind of technique. So just literally working that into the crease and blending as I'm placing the product. I'm kind of bringing it down onto the lash line as well. And I don't want to bring this too high either, so really focusing it just on the corner 
in the crease. So yeah, that little bit of darker brown on the crease there just really gives it a bit of definition and it's not too dramatic. So I went ahead and did the exact same thing on the other eye and now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut the crease. To do that, I'm gonna take my MAC Studio Finish Concealer again and my angle brush, which is the P410 from Powder and & Pout. And then I'm literally just covering the whole lower lid with this concealer and being very precise with where I cut it. So I'm cutting it from the very inner corner in here and just bringing it upwards. This is definitely not like a necessary step, but I kind of want to just bring this look to the next level because I'm not being really dramatic with the colors. So I just think this will make the eye look pop a little bit more. And then we're going to be covering this area that I've cut out with a shimmery color. So you want to make sure that's nice and rounded as well at the top there and just bring it over as far as you like then. That's completely up to yourself. You can bring it over all the way here, but I kind of like to just stop in the middle. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the other eye. Next, we're going with the shimmery color, which is my favorite part. And I'm gonna be mixing two today. So I'm gonna be mixing this one here, the second one in, and this one down here, because this one's a little bit light and this one's a little bit dark. So I think they'll be nice together. And I'm gonna be using my powder and pout P325 brush. First, I'm gonna layer the lighter one. So literally just packing that all over the area we have cut out. And then I'm gonna just layer the slightly darker color over that. After I have that done, I'm gonna go in then and just blend the edges again, just so there's no harsh line. And I'm also gonna bring some color underneath, so everything I have on top, I'm gonna to bring that underneath as well. And I'm actually gonna use a P310. And I'm actually gonna use my angled brush to bring the darker brown in closer to the lash line. So I'm just bringing that right in underneath the lash line, and this is a good trick instead of eyeliner. That's done now. I'm actually going to take my Dints uh, blending brush again, the P310, and I'm just going to darken the corners a tiny bit just to add a tiny bit of depth. So I'm going to go in with that same first brown color and I'm just going to press it in rather than blending. So literally pressing it in, keeping it really low and in the corner. I just think it needs a little bit of extra depth. Next I'm going to do my liner and I'm going to be using my Kat Von D tattoo liner. I love this. I'm actually not going to do a wing tonight for a change. I feel like I always do wings. But the last few weeks I'm actually liking liner without a wing. So I'm just going to do it on the lash line and then smoke it into the darker colour into my crease. So I always just start in the inner corner and work my way over. I have a full video on how I do my liner as well, so I'll link that below in the description box if you want to see a more in-depth kind of version. But with the pin, it's actually quite easy, so I just go straight in. I'm not going to make it too thick tonight because I just kind of want to keep this look a little bit more natural. I know it's not natural, but you know what I mean. Making it a little bit thicker going towards the end because we'll be smoking that up. And then I'm just going to stop it right there. And the same with the other eye. Next, I'm just going to get my dense brush again, the P310, my lifesaver, and just pick up the black shade in the palette, it's just to buff that into the corner. Not making it too dramatic now, but just to buff the eyeliner into the rest of the eyeshadow, just so it doesn't look kind of blunt. And the exact same with the other side. All of these kind of techniques that I'm doing tonight really is just about being precise and just not bringing the product out too far or up too far. You just have to take that little bit of extra time when you're doing these things. And after that's done, I'm gonna take my angle brush one last time, dip that into the black also, and bring it underneath the eye as well, right next to the lash line, just to balance things out. So I'm gonna keep the majority of it over near the corner, and then whatever's left, kind of just bring it over slightly. And as you can see, that just adds a little bit more depth to the look. I know I'm after making it a bit more dramatic, but when I put the lashes on, it will kind of need that. So I'm going to add my lashes, and I'm going to be using my Eye Lure by Vegas Nail Lashes. Eye Lure came out with a collaboration last year with a bunch of bloggers and influencers and YouTubers. And I absolutely loved the whole collection, and these are one of my favourites. So yeah, I'm going to quickly apply them now. I actually have a whole video on how I apply lashes as well. I'm plugging in now tonight for so many other videos, but I just don't want to be repeating myself. So I'm going to do these quickly off camera and I'm going to link that video below so you can check that out. Just so this video isn't a million years long. Okay, they're on now, as you can see, and I added a bit of mascara as well. I used the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, which I absolutely love. I think it's such a good mascara for the price. And now I'm going to finally apply my lip because I think I just look so crazy without a lip and I cannot wait to apply it. I've been like dying to apply it the whole time. 
So you all know I'm going for a red lip. So I'm going to be going for my trusty Feel So Grand from MAC. This is one of their liquid lipsticks and they are just amazing in my opinion. They're a tiny bit drying, but to be honest, I think all liquid lipsticks are drying, so I don't take much notice of it. But they're so long wearing, they have a great colour payoff. Like I just absolutely adore them. I think it's going to really just finish off the look. Yes, I am living for this red lip, guys. I absolutely adore a matte red lip. There's just something so, like, classic about it. I'm obsessed. But anyway, one last step. I'm going to highlight using my glow kit. I just got this, so you'll have seen it in my last haul. And I haven't used it that much. I've only kind of swatched it and I think used it once, maybe. So I'm excited to be using it tonight. So I'm going to be mixing these two shades, Summer and Moonstone. And I'm going to be using the Powder and Pout P210 brush. And you know I'm also going to be wetting my brush with some Fix Plus because why not? Yeah, so I'm going to apply it right on top of the cheekbone. Oh yes. I think highlight with this look is a must. A little bit down the nose, on the forehead. And guys, I think we are finished. That is the look. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I think it's like the perfect Valentine's Day look. I love how soft the eye is, but it's still very sultry and kind of romantic. And I just am living for the red lip. I think a red lip on Valentine's is a must. And yeah, I just love how the two look together. I think the eye is just dramatic enough for the lip. You know, I think if I'd gone that one step further, it would have been too much. But I think they really complement each other. And yeah, I'm delighted with how it turned out. Okay guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have such a fab Valentine's Day, whether you're spending it with your friends or your other half or your family or whoever else. I hope you have a good one. Don't forget to give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit that big massive subscribe button on my channel if you'd like to see more. And also feel free to leave a comment too. I'd love that. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>